This is Joshua Hart here for Seconds Out. Delighted today to be joined by heavyweight prospect Jeremiah Milton. Jeremiah, first of all, thank you very much for your time as always. How is everything? Yo, bless, bless, man. I'm actually over here in the UK, man, enjoying my time. Yeah, yeah, so everything's good. It's very good to hear, I'll see. We'll start off talking about what brings you to the UK. Uh, what bring, You know, you're over in my neck of the woods at the moment, aren't you? Oh, yeah, 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 man. I mean, your, your state, your city, you know what I'm saying, your country, you know what I'm saying? It's it's cool, man. Uh, yeah, I'm over here actually uh, sparring with, uh, you know, Team AJ and those guys, helping them get ready for the Dubois fight. Um, I got in, what is it, Saturday. Um, managed to make it to the Joe Joyce fight uh, versus Derek. So, yeah, yeah, just settling in. Fair enough. Well, we'll start off by just talking about yourself while we know that you are over here sparring. What can you tell us about the next time you'll be in the ring as a professional, continuing your professional journey? I had a whole bunch of dead calls, man. I actually was working on something for about two months. I think last time we had spoke, I was in the middle of it. And then, um, you know, kind of the business of boxing right now, there's a lot of big opportunities out there. And I think a lot of the, I don't know, the people that are orchestrating the shows or just whatever, they're kind of like focused on, you know, securing every little crumb that's out there. So like a lot of things are kind of in the mix right now. But I think when I get back or even while I'm out here, I'm going to work on, you know, possibly getting a couple, maybe just one off type deals or something like that. I'm a free agent now. And, uh, you know, navigating that for the first time has been different. Understandable. And when you do get in back in the ring, who would who would you like to fight? Who's the ideal opponent for yourself? Uh, you know, I'm looking at everybody in the division. Justice Hooney would be a good good fight for me. Um, let me see who else would I consider like uh, you know, I, I kind of mapped this out a while ago, but um, you know, at the end of the day, um any of the other prospects Anybody that's, um, you know, you know, got a little name for themselves as well or anything like that. Um, but I'd like to just get back busy, get back active, um, showcase what I can do. Um, but, yeah, anybody in that top 15, you know, that's looking for an opportunity or something like that. Fair enough. And then, obviously, you mentioned now being a free agent. How... I guess I guess I could say how pleased you to now be a free agent. I'm sure that's probably opening up a lot more doors for yourself. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Like, um, you know, it also gives me the opportunity to venture out. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, you know, when you're in the driver's seat, you know what I'm saying, you take on all the responsibilities and all the bills. So, you know, it's a bit, how do you say, um, uh, yeah, you might. I might be stressed a little bit more every now and then about the business or whatever. But I think the right opportunity will come, and I'm just being patient. Um, not unreasonable though, but just patient. Fair enough. And then we'll move forward. You mentioned that you made it to the Joe Joyce versus Derek Chisora fight on Saturday night. Uh, what did you think of the fight? It was a great fight. I thought um both men, you know, looked good. You know, and they 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 gave it they all. Um. You know, Joyce kind of did what Joyce does. He takes him on the chin and keeps coming. And, you know, Derek just didn't give up, you know. And uh, eventually, you know what I'm saying, he landed a shot to put Joe down. Joe managed to get right back up, almost like uh, Fury or Undertaker or something crazy, the way he did look and got up. But, yeah, it was a great fight between both guys. I actually had Chisora winning. Um, he seemed to land like much of a cleaner telling shots to me, but it was a very close fight, competitive. And how do you feel about Derek Chisora still fighting at this stage of his career? I mean, man's got to make his own decision, but, you know, I think he should look to do other things, you know? Um, you know, even if he wanted to get on the exhibition side of things or something, something like that, I don't know. Call it silly, call it whatever you want to call it, but just, you know, protect your health. Um, and I mean, what a high note to go out on, you know, I don't think anybody was picking him to win this fight particularly. I think the odds were something crazy stacked against him. So, yeah, 
you know, there's a lot of better things you can do, especially when you have um, money and resources and you can't, you know, get your health back. And, you know, I know he has a family and stuff like that. So I don't know, man. Uh, the limelight is a hard place to walk away from. As a fighter, I understand it. But, you know, he's uh, he served the people well and, you know, he's had an amazing career. And his choice is his choice. Absolutely. And Derek has obviously come out and said that he has two more fights left in him. So he wants to hit 50 fights. And then once he's hit that 50, he will step back. Who do you believe would be good opponents for him to fight in his last two? Shoot. I mean, if you want to go that route, just why don't you just Wilder and Ghana it up? You know what I'm saying? Uh, even Floyd, when he had his last fight, he fought an MMA fighter, you know, um, somebody that nobody would have really rated in a boxing ring, but, you know, still secured his legacy. And, um, you know, he ended it on his, I know how he wanted to. So, yeah, I would say maybe Wilder and Ganu, but I, I think Wilder would probably clip him. But see, that's just me thinking. So that's there's interest in the fight, yeah. Fair enough. And from what I know, I know you were doing some sparring with Joe Joyce in the preparation to this fight. Um, how was the sparring with Joe? Well, I mean, you know, Joe is just Joe. I mean, um, I don't know. He's took a couple of back steps in his career. I think it's probably due to his team, you know, not really surrounding himself with people that's going to look out for him. Um yeah, I had my own personal opinions on these guys. Uh, you know, they actually stiffed me on a little bit of money. It took them a while to pay me just for my services and everything like that. I think if he would have brought in the proper spawn and his team would have did a little bit better in his preparation, maybe he would have had a better outcome. But at the same time, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm tired of sugarcoating some of it. The man's just slow. It is what it is. Understandable. Um, and following Joe's defeat, Frank Warren said in the build-up that he really does struggle to see where the loser is going to go after this fight. What or can you see any way that Joe Joe's able to work his way back up following this defeat? Absolutely, anybody can come again. I mean, the thing about it is you have to you have to change something up, though. I don't know what exactly it is he changes up. Um, you know, I don't understand. You know, I, I his fighting style is interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, time to just revisit everything you've been doing. Um, you know, he has heavy hands. He has enough to get the job done. Uh, I think he went out there wanting to give those fans a memorable night as well. And, uh, you know, or he just couldn't get the job done from the outside. I don't know, but. You know, he, he traded way too much with Chisora, Um, played right into his strategy, getting that close to him and, uh, you know, kind of paid the price for it. I mean, you know, uh, you know what? I was in that stadium and uh, at the O2 and I'm just listening. The amount of hate this man is getting is unreal, bro. Like, I get it. Dell, Dell boy, you know what I'm saying? He got a lot of fans, but like, the booing was amazing. You know, they're announcing like 2016 Olympian and boo. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like, yo. Yeah, that's tough, man. I couldn't imagine going home and getting booed, dog. I mean, this man did represent, man, and he's done a lot. Uh, you know, uh no I can always speak the truth, man, no matter how I feel about somebody. You know, he done a lot for his people and uh his country. And to get booed like that and to get looked over. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, don't go out there fighting for the fans, dog. If if they're going, I don't, I mean, eh, it's, it's hard to say, man. Like, I know he wanted to go to get get war, but like, you got to learn too, man. It's like, yo, if, you, if this is not working, you know, just running in there with your chin all the time, why don't you just add defense? I don't know. Get somebody that can help you with that. How fair of it for, um, is it for you know boxing fans around the world to possibly say that it's too late for Joe Joyce to make any changes to his style? I mean, age isn't doing much um, to help with that argument, you know. Uh, um, I don't know, man. I just think, you know, being an Olympian, you know, there is something that separates, you know, you from the average 
<laughs> Joe, uh, that like, yeah, he can, you know, he can make something happen if he really wanted to. Um, but it's about comfort. It's about, you know, I don't know. Is he able to think for himself in these situations? Does he, you know, or does he just allow people to tell him that, you know, this is good? Um, a lot of times people can't, you know, come to their own conclusions about things. Um, and they're being advised wrong, you know. On Sunderland's moving forward, um, Andy Ruiz versus Jerome Miller takes place this weekend on Terence Crawford versus Israel Madrimov on the card. What do you make of that fight? It's a great fight. Um, you know what? Uh I would not be shocked if Miller comes out of it. Um, I want Andy to win. I think I'm just more of a, you know, his story is better than me and everything like that. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Jarrell manages to catch him because, you know, coming off the Du Bois fight with Daniel, um, that was a tough uh, night out for him, but he wasn't completely in the shape he needed to be in. And yet he still stood there. And Daniel's been on rare form lately. Um, so him being a, the puncher that he is and as tough as he is, mm, I don't I don't know. I think it's it's going to be both men not taking a back step, really, you know, but Andy's quick hands and everything like that, you know, he might he might be able to catch him. But I think Miller can take a take a good punch. And for the winner, we already know where the winner's going to go. We know that they'll probably advance forward to secure some more of these big paydays on the Riyadh season card. But where does the loser of this fight go? Um, you know, maybe just a couple steps down with the Riyadh season. I mean, here's the thing: everybody in Riyadh season keeps getting reloaded, like um, like they're afraid to introduce new faces or something. So, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, um. Jarrell Miller is the king of opportunities. So if he loses, you know, he'll still get a shot somewhere. Um, but uh, with Andy, you know, I don't know. Uh, I could see if Andy not winning, Andy will make a decision to maybe just kind of move on. Maybe I don't know if he'll really have the desire to continue fighting, you know, like that. Um, you know, you've seen him check out a lot of times. I think he only wants the big paydays and big names. So, you know, I don't think this is necessarily a big name, but it might be a big payday behind it. Who knows? Understandable. And can you see Andy Ruiz getting into world, world, world title contention following a win over Jerome Miller? Obviously, we know that the belts are all a little bit locked into place right now, but once everything's all said and done with the belts, can he get back into contention? Me personally, I don't see it. Uh, just, you know based off of the powers that be and just the sport of boxing, I don't necessarily see how he works his way back into that conversation. I mean, he had his opportunity some years ago and, uh, um, you know, he's still riding off of that, of course. Um, but I feel like, you know, just the, the landscape and everything like that, it might be a bit too difficult for him to really, you know, navigate that in a way that he would want to be comfortable with it and, you know, the way that, you know, boxing is ran. And another big heavyweight fight on the card. Jared Anderson, I know a man that you've been asking for for a while. He takes on Martin Bacoli. How does that fight go? Well, hopefully Bacoli sleeps him and then I can get in there. No, <laughs> you know, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Uh, kind of. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think he has a great fight ahead of him. I think Martin is going to, you know, definitely put that pressure on them. You know, um, hey, he he had his questionable doubts with Charles Martin and, you know, going the distance with Riyad Murray. Um, if his head's glued on straight, you know, he should be able to box him and maybe we just pray that Bacoli gets tired so he can pick up another one of those TKO victories where he just kind of slaps you to death. But, um, you know, I don't see him actually stopping Bacoli. Um, I see it being either a Jared Anderson victory on points or shit, Jared getting clipped, to be honest with you. Is it fair to say that this is Jared Anderson's toughest fight in his career so far? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, and that's no disrespect to anybody else like Charles Martin, who's a really good fighter. Um, but, yeah, Bacoli's on that 
swing to where he's really trying to make his way back. And he's only got the one loss to Michael Hunter. Um, you know, so if he's done his road work and his preparation for this fight, you know, um, Jared's got a real tough night on his hands. And if Jared Anderson does come out on top with a victory, who do you feel top rank are going to try and get him in there with next? I mean, they're shooting for the stars, but they got to be very careful because a lot of these guys would knock him out. I mean, a lot of these guys will really knock him out. Um, it doesn't get any easier for Jared, unfortunately, not having any power, um, uh, despite the TKO victories. Uh, most of them due to opponents fatiguing and not wanting to fight back. It's um, it's a tough road. It's a tough road. And how badly do you still want the Jared Anderson fight? I oh, mean, you can hear it in my voice, dog. I'm burning up for these opportunities, man. Um, but, you know, I'm staying my course, bro. Uh, whichever fight and opportunity lands, it'll be the wrong call for whoever to accept that phone call. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I see it going down. I'd like to take this whole... I feel like he's been kind of, you know, given the mantle of Americans next great with a lot of good marketing around him. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, have a word about that myself. So, Jeremiah, obviously, you mentioned sparring Anthony Joshua and being over here in the UK. Uh, one thing that you said in a previous interview with us here at Seconds Out is that you turned down sparring with Hergovic, um, for his preparation for the Dubois fight. What was the difference about coming over here and sparring Anthony Joshua? Uh, first off, I'm not leaving for Hergovic. You know, Hergovic can catch these hands. A lot of these guys can catch these hands. Joe Joyce can catch these hands. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, Joshua being the champion that he is, um, the team is really solid. Um, these guys, you know, they're they're just I understand how they work. I never sparred with Hergovic before. I'm not about to pick him over Daniel Dubois. I didn't have him beating Daniel Dubois. Um, he didn't beat Daniel Dubois. Um, yeah, the big difference in that is just, you know, Joshua, stature, all this other stuff. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna leave the comfort of my home to be out here helping somebody else make a million dollars, it ain't gonna be some chunk that I think I slap up, you know. Fair enough. And do you feel bad on Daniel for doing this? Oh, no, 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 no. But here's the thing. So like I spot with Francis and Ganu. Last time when Joshua was fighting him, you know, uh, I try to stay, you know, the, whatever happens is going to happen. You know, what Joshua be saying now, it is what it is. You know, hey, I got bills, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got things I need to handle back home. And Danny's doing good. Daniel has missed the opportunity himself. I mean, literally, you look at Daniel Dubois, he's living Joe Joyce's life right now. You know he think Joe Joyce feels bad about this? You know, like, yo, Joe is sitting here, you know what I'm saying, getting booed back at home, losing to Shizora, 40 how old, you know, um, when he was just on top of the world a couple years ago. Uh, you can't feel bad for Daniel Dubois. You can't feel bad for anybody that's making a million dollars in boxing. But, uh, you know, hey, I'm here. I'm going to give it my best. They know I'm going to give it my best. Um you know, and the best man went on that night. How do you see that fight unfolding? You know, it's a good fight. I think um, this fight right here has the potential for, I don't know, like, uh, it has the potential to go two ways. Joshua takes him out super early, or it becomes, you know, one of those barn burners, you know, fight of the year type candidates. Um, you know, we got to admit, Daniel has been looking um the part he got blasted a couple rounds with just continuous right hands he cannot do that with joshua or it's going to be a very very early night um hargovic and joshua not even the same uh, when it comes to power um uh, but you know just seeing the fortitude and him being able to make up his mind and you know the relationship he has with the coach and his dad and everything seems to be working out for him. He's going to come in full of confidence. Uh, you know, he's world champion, you know, quote unquote, he has the belt. Uh, so yeah. And Joshua and people are not paying attention to Joshua. I'm, I'm, I haven't got a chance to spar with him yet. 
I'm looking forward to it just because, uh, you know, his his approach to the game has been a lot different lately. Last time I sparred with him, you know, he was still trying to figure himself out in Dallas. Um, but as a fighter, when I watch film on him now and I see the um, fights that he's in, you know, he's really changed something. So I'm curious to see what that is. Uh, probably come tomorrow or whatever. Are you just excited to see the the new Anthony Joshua with a coach that, you know, has implemented something in his mind that has just made him such a, I guess you could say a tactical wrecking ball now? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Um, You know, this is why I'm like, you know, of course I got to pay my bills and stuff. That's what I come out here for. They, they pay me top dollar. But, you know, at the same time, man, I love the fight. So, you know, even if I'm not in the fight, you know, I'm, I'm sharing the ring with all these guys. Um, you know, I've been around, I really have. And, uh, you know, my love for this is what keeps me, keeps me going, keeps me ultra competitive with them in my own right. Um, I don't care if I don't get to do it on the night behind closed doors is good with me. So yeah, I want to see what this is all about now too. And will you be getting yourself down to Wembley possibly if, if you're about in the UK for Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois? Uh, you know, it's a, there's a possibility, man, but, you know, um, I'll be ready to get home to and start, you know, shifting things to my, my own day, you know, uh, it's hard being there as a fighter watching fights and you're like, oh, I just need to wait till you see me. So, yeah, you know, I do need to get on the ball and make sure that I secure my own date, uh, and everything like that. Um, so, uh, mm, and there's a possibility if, hey, if it comes up, it comes up, if it don't. Ciao. I'll be back, back over to the States. Um, there has been a lot of talk from fans and people in boxing claiming that Anthony Joshua has a fragile chin. What do you make of those claims? I just think, you know, all that stuff is like, uh, how you say, I don't know, Dane Dubois is still being labeled a quitter. Like, you know, you got to let some things go, you know? Um but the thing about it is it's, it's always going to be on the internet, the loss to Ruiz. And, you know, maybe he's been a thinking man in the past where he's questioning what he should do in the ring. And that might come off as timid or whatever. But and the one we've been seeing lately, I don't see nothing like that. Then just moving forward, last topic. Usyk versus Fury 2, again, official now. Fury's manager, Spencer Brown, has come out and said that Fury will be sticking with the same team that he had in the first fight, despite all the talk of, you know, too many voices in the corner. How do you believe he should approach Usyk in the rematch if he is sticking with the same team? Uh, well, I mean, you know, he has to jump on him early. You don't try to go the distance with Usyk. Um, the thing about Usyk is, you know, he comes on stronger later. So um, the stuff he was doing in the early rounds where he seemed to be hurting him and affecting him, he has to do more of that, you know what I'm saying? He has to go ahead, you know, still take your time to a certain degree, but you have to stick it to him. And you got to just, you know, I don't know, get on them weights, dog. Don't, you you got boxing talent for days. Make sure you run it. Make sure you're in supreme conditioning. But, man, get on some weights, bro. Like, get physically strong. Don't be big, squishy pushover, man, no more. Like, you know, get physically strong, physically strong um, to where a motherfucker can't push you back on the back foot. You know, I don't know. I feel like he was that guy in Wilder, too. He was physically stronger than he'd ever been. And uh, whatever he did in that camp is kind of what he needs to recreate for his physical. Um, you got to take Usyk out. You can't go to distance with him because he's a smaller man. He's going to have a better gas tank in the end and pick your shots. Best advice. You mentioned Fury obviously trying to go back to the way that he was against Wilder in the second fight. Uh, but a lot of talk has been that that trilogy with Wilder has took a lot out of both fighters respectively. Do you reckon that could be a big playing factor? Oh, yeah. I mean... You know, at the end of the day, those were very, very tough, um, tough fights. Um, you know, I don't believe that. I don't believe he's gone. I just think he just doesn't take care of his body outside of the ring. I think, like, you know, um, and he's so talented. The problem when you're talented, right, is like 
you could be somebody could be telling you this stuff like yo you're not really giving it all champ and you like nah man like i'm i'm good you know what i'm saying like i'm trust me i'm blowing people away and sparring i'm doing all this stuff but he's a super talented boxer you know he he not looking at what's important when it comes down to physical strength or anything like that like you know how many boxers are like bro i need to lift weights man I'm, I'm a boxer but it's not about getting like big and muscly you know what i'm saying you got to find the person that understands the science how to make you stronger you know um and uh yeah i think he has respectable power you know you're not going to just walk in you know but hey if you want to go through hell somebody's going to walk in but you got to make sure if they come in there they get knocked out for their troubles. So he's going to need to work on his power and just truly be the bigger man. I think, like I said earlier, Chizora gave him the best fight because he fought him. He didn't try to box him. You know what I'm saying? And he even said, oh, Chizora hit me the hardest. Yeah, because he was clubbing you, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, take him and get him out the club, bro. You got to you gotta go bouncer mode on him, man. Like, yo, tell you, bro. Animal. And ultimately, how do you see the rematch between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk playing out? Uh, he'll probably get clipped. No, I'm just, he'll probably, yeah. <laughs> Yo, hopefully, hopefully, I don't want to see the man get clipped late, man, like he did. But, like, let it have been anybody else, that fight would have been stopped. But you know what? I'll have it just because it's Tyson Fury and we want to see him. We know he's going to come back. We know he's going to, like, recover. Don't know how he does it, man. <laughs> but don't don't let that happen again, man. Don't, don't get beat from pillar to post, boy. You was bouncing off the ring, boy. I said, I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh. Hey, yeah, yeah. But um, hey, if it goes past eight, you know, he'll probably get he'll probably get touched up again. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, best advice is get strong and get after him. And then if Fury and Joshua both come through, we know that all boxing fans around the world, and especially in the UK, want to see Fury versus Joshua at Wembley. If those two do ever get in the ring, who do you believe wins? Dude, amazing fight. Um, just the, the person that's been in this sport, and as a fan, I would love to just see that fight. Um, I think there has been a silent passing of the torch, though. I think AJ is going to take it, and I think um, you know he would he would catch Fury because um, he's committing to these punches like crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I think uh, I think they would both get up. You know, Fury's going to train really hard for it, but if he doesn't correct these, like if he doesn't get his like body like physically strong. He wouldn't have anything for AJ at this point. Like, it's just, you know, it's just been a silent pass on the torch. Nobody actually knows it yet. Jeremiah, that's a cool place to leave it. Thank you very much for your time, as always. And enjoy yourself while you're in the UK. Thank you. Okay, brother. Appreciate it.